This is the review of Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. A couple of weeks ago, when I was editing more than an hour and a half long video, I realized I need to change a few things. One of them is that I do a lot of horizontal scrolling on a timeline and moving of the bar at the bottom of the screen, which annoys me tremendously. When I was looking for a solution, I rediscovered that some eyes have horizontal scroll wheel. After some research, I decided to get this mouse. Before we have a look at its features, let's open up the box and have a look at it from all sides. Now that we know how it looks, we should compare it to previous two generations from MX Master series. Some of you may already own one or both previous models, so let's have a look at what changed. When we look at the specs, we can see that it's 1.1 mm lower, the width is 1.4 mm smaller, and the depth has grown by 2.6 mm. It is also 4 grams lighter. So when it comes to size, only minor changes were made. Now let's have a look at the buttons. Let's start from the top. The Motif button is longer and flatter. It has an improved electromagnetic scroll wheel, which has no plastic on it, like previous versions, and which is more precise. Logitech claims that it's 87% more precise than MX Master 2S, if you have Logitech options installed and smooth scrolling enabled. I am unable to measure it, all I can say is that it's the best scroll wheel on a mouse I have ever used, and we will look at it in more detail further. The battery triple status LEDs were reduced to one and moved behind the thumb scroll wheel. It turns red when battery reaches 10% charge or below, and it will be pulsing green when charging. The Logitech option software will also show you battery status notifications, including low charge warnings. Forward and back buttons don't have a triangular shape and moved from behind the horizontal thumb wheel under it. That is a huge plus because it was one of the main reasons why I avoided both older models. It is one of the features that I use daily and the ergonomics was simply unacceptable. Now, when they are placed under it, they are easily usable, yet still not completely ideal. I will have some recommendations for a further improvement later. The horizontal scroll wheel is larger, which makes it easier to scroll with and it has no plastic on it. It is a key feature which made me search for this mouse. The gesture button has now a notch, which makes it easier to use because you know exactly where to press it with least amount of resistance. The mouse is available in three colors, mid-gray, mid-black and graphite, which is the version I am reviewing. Subjectively, all colors look fine to me and I wouldn't mind having any of them. I chose graphite because it matches the color of my keyboard. Now let's have a look at the ergonomics and my initial experience with the mouse. I'll be comparing it to other mice I have so that we can clearly see and hear the difference. First time using this mouse, the surface seemed a little rough and sort of dry compared to my previous mouse. 
This sold itself after two days of use when your hands naturally sweat and the surface gets greasier and smoother. I know how this sounds, but that's how it is. Yet the surface on my original mouse feels smoother and nicer to the touch, more silky, looks like more premium material. So that's something Logitech can definitely improve on. When it comes to handling, at first I wasn't sure I'm holding it properly because of its shape, which takes some getting used to. Especially if you were using a high-end mouse before, which has special spaces for ring finger and little finger, and your palm rests on it. I found out that if you want to use this mouse with precision, both your middle finger and index finger shouldn't overlap the mouse buttons. Only if you have shorter fingers or smaller hands, you can rest your palms on it and it won't affect the precision of use. So ladies have an advantage here. The best way of holding this mouse is using a thumb, little finger and ring finger for holding the mouse and the movement and middle finger and index finger for clicking without resting your palm on the mouse and instead resting it on the table or resting it on a mat which has gel palm rest for most comfort. The primary mouse buttons left and right require very little pressure to click and they work fine. When it comes to how loud they are, let's compare them to other mice I have and find out in a little test where they stand. This is the sound test. What I'm going to do is to place each of these five mice on this spot on the mat, which is exactly 50 centimeters away from the sound meter, which is placed at the height of my ears. So it's a realistic scenario, something you might be able to experience at home. What you'll hear in your speakers is the sound recorded by the microphone, which is 60 centimeters away from the mat. It is just out of frame. And I'll press each mouse button on the mouse five times and the loudest click will be recorded as a result of this test. So let's begin. The first in the line is Logitech Master MX3. And the loudest click was 43.9 decibels. Now my Onyx Neos QG. And the loudest click was 44.5 decibels. Now my Onyx Caster. The loudest click was 43.1 decibels. Next in line is older mouse. It is Microsoft Comfort Mouse 6000. And the loudest click was 52.1 decibels. This one is really loud. Now the silent mouse. You might not be even able to hear it. This is Speedlink Collado. And the loudest click was 32 decibels, but it's just about the level which this is able to record, so it might be even lower. So now we know which one is the loudest. And I would say that Logitech MX3 is around normal sound level, so really nothing special, uh, just about average. The mode shift button allows you to switch between fast scrolling mode to step by step mode, so you are able to make smaller steps and scroll by lines or set of lines depending on how you set it in your OS.
The scroll wheel felt a little sharper compared to the rubberized one, but after using smooth scrolling, which requires less amount of force to turn the wheel compared to the regular mouse, and allows you to spin fast to cover large areas of content when doing heavy scrolling, I got used to it in a couple of hours. I had a hard time going back to the normal scroll wheel, and after using it for two days, I came to a conclusion that this is the way to go. So unless I have to, I'm not going back to the regular scroll wheel. Forward and back buttons are okay, but flatter and bigger ones on my Onyx are much better. If they were bigger and flat, it would be easier and more comfortable to press them with more precision and when using the thumb scroll wheel, you would slide over them with more ease instead of touching them. It's not going to result in pressing them, that requires more force, but still this could be improved in the next generation. The advantage of Logitech's buttons is that they are much quieter and the ones on Myonix are clicky and loud. So this could be improved on my Onyx part. The horizontal scroll wheel is a special feature of this mouse. It needs adjusting of sensitivity for most applications to make sure you are using its full potential. I like this feature a lot and it's the reason why I decided to switch to this mouse and I'm happy with the decision. I would even increase its sensitivity in software for scrolling over longer distances and I'd add smooth scrolling capability which is present in the main scroll wheel because it would help when you are going through long spreadsheets or editing long videos but anyway as it is it's a great help the positioning of the gesture button seemed to be a little bit unfortunate but if you get used to pressing it exactly at a place where the notch is you'll start using it You'll just have to press it with your thumb at a slightly different angle, yet I still think it would be better if it were a bit easier to press or if it moved in front of forward and back buttons. So you won't have to move your thumb out of the original axis. But overall it's usable. When we look at the bottom we can see that here is an on and off switch, an optical sensor and a special switch which allows you to pair it with up to three devices via Bluetooth. You can also use the included USB dongle, but you really don't need it. The number of the channel is blinking slowly, that means now it's really steady, that means that it's already paired, but if you see that it's blinking quickly, that means that it's free for pairing. In my case, you can see that channel 3 and channel 1 are already paired with some devices and channel 2 is ready for pairing. Now let's talk about the battery. It uses lithium ion battery, which is hidden inside and is not user replaceable which is a big minus and I consider it being wasteful. It should last for 70 days on one full charge, which takes about an hour or three hours on one minute charge. It took me three weeks to discharge it after unpacking it out of the box, so the capacity is solid. The mouse will start blinking red when the battery is depleted. After connecting it to the power by cable with USB-C connector, it will start blinking green the cable is 130 centimeters long, so if you are used to charging it from your desktop, which is placed under the table, you won't be able to charge it and use the mouse at the same time. You may either buy a longer USB-C cable or connect it to a remote power bank, which is what I did, or connect it to a monitor if it has connectors. Now to the solution, what should be done in the next generation of this mouse. The mice has for years had the possibility to exchange batteries like this one. This one uses dual AAA batteries which are rechargeable 
and can last long. So the mouse can survive for years, even after the original battery has died. This mouse uses 4000 DPI dark field sensor, which is, I think, enough. Compared to this mouse, which has 16000 DPI, I usually had it set to 2400 for slow motion and 3800 DPI for 4K screen, so I really never used 4000, that's why I think 4000 for this mouse is enough. I tried using it on wood, glass, plastic, metal and fabric and it worked on all of these surfaces without any problem, so that's a huge plus for this mouse. When it comes to reach of the Bluetooth sensor, I was able to move the mouse from across the room without any lag, so if you want to use it from a distance on a large TV screen, that's definitely possible. When it comes to recommended use, this is primarily a productivity mouse. You can of course use it for playing RPGs, adventure games or turn-based strategies, basically any slower paced games, that won't be any problem. But if you really want to enjoy first person shooters or any fast paced games, I'd recommend using a lighter, smaller and more responsive wired mouse. Let's have a look at the Logitech software. If you want to be able to use all the features of the mouse, you need to install Logitech option software. The mouse will work even without it, but you won't be able to customize its sensitivity and use its advanced features like user-defined application profiles or Logitech Flow. So without it, the overall experience would be unsatisfying. To install it, you need to download a file which has 195 megabytes, which is quite a lot for a mouse driver. Because of its extra features, it's somewhat acceptable, but I would still prefer to have an option of installing something smaller. At the beginning of the installation, the software will ask you if you want to share analytics data. So I was naturally curious what kind of data does a mouse manufacturer want from me. What really crossed my mind was the thought, when will a blow dryer or an iron ask me to send my user data to its manufacturer? Anyway. It seemed a little suspicious, so I clicked at a small text under it, which says learn more about Logitech's privacy policy. After doing so, it opens a web page, and I naturally clicked at what information we collect. And after looking at the list, my eyeballs turned around like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> they want to know what music I listen to, what apps I use, what TV I have, and the list goes on and on. They are also willing to share and disclose the information with their partners, which are not listed, and they occasionally update this statement, and if there are any changes, they will post it on their website, so you may check it. That's really wonderful. Of course, I'll leave the decision on what to click on to you. For me personally, there is a no, plus a firewall on top, as they say, better safe than sorry. After the installation, you have an option of changing the functionality of the buttons, which I didn't find necessary, however it's possible. You can also check the pointer speed, enable smooth scrolling, change wheel direction and set the sensitivity for the thumb wheel. You can also enable smart shift and its sensitivity. The ability to create user profiles for individual applications is really handy, because they require different level of sensitivity, I started using it immediately. On the other hand, what bothers me quite a bit is that I'm unable to set the pointer speed or sensitivity level exactly by using the numbers as visual indicator representing the DPI level as I was able to do with my previous mouse. There is a software issue which could be fixed in a couple of hours, so that is a homework for Logitech I guess. If we gave them time till next week, I think it could be called being generous and reasonable. This is a feature a $100 mouse should have automatically without mentioning it. The Logitech Flow allows you to use your mouse on more computers simultaneously, which is a nice option. You can set which side of the screen will be the gate to another computer. 
This allows you to use a single mouse to operate both your laptop and desktop without the necessity of manual switching between their individual Bluetooth channels. They have to be both connected to the same network of course. You just move your mouse cursor to the edge of the screen on one computer and it will appear on the edge of the other computer screen depending on how you set it. This is really a nice feature and Logitech deserves a pat on the back for this one. It also enables you to copy files from one computer to another just by copy pasting it. The speed will be limited by your network, so if you are copying a file from a desktop which is connected by a LAN to your Wi-Fi router, the speed from the router to your laptop will be the bottleneck. For some people who don't know how to use shared folders, this can definitely be a plus. It is likely that your administrator at work, if you are not using your own laptop, won't allow to use these network features because it's a security risk. If I were an administrator, I definitely wouldn't allow it. This depends hugely on how sensitive data you work with. When you load into your OS, in my case Windows 10 Pro, it usually takes a few seconds before Logitech Options loads and in that short period of time, the mouse functions are set on default sensitivity settings, which is low, so the movement is slower. It's not a major issue, just something you have to get used to. Overall, using this mouse solved my problem with horizontal scrolling, and I like the hyper-scrolling feature of the primary scroll wheel as well. So, would I recommend it? If you plan on using it for work, I would definitely recommend it, despite all the criticism I mentioned in this review. When I'm reviewing something, I tend to be more on the stricter side and do not leave things under the surface. The way I see it, my job is to provide you with solid information based on which you can make up your own mind and decide for yourself whether you like things or not. So thank you for watching and see you in another video.